Good morning. How are you doing, lovely people? This is your Yoga Solutions Live on this glorious Tuesday, the 23rd of June, 2020. I hope you're having a wonderful time wherever you are. Um, I'm Mark J. Equaviva, uh, the uh, Envirosomatic Approach to Bodywork. Um, yes, which uh, um, I'm using that term more freely now, more regularly. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a clear description of what I think the answer is in terms of solutions. Um, as in, um, you know, uh, mo most of the bodywork in the West is, uh, is kind of medi medicalized, as in it's uh, about treating the body like a machine that needs uh, fixing, and w um, which is, you know, appropriate if you're broken and uh, you need to go to a surgeon or a doctor or, you know, something to someone ex external to patch you up if something's torn or cut or something, you know. But um, when it comes to dealing with your own body, to, to treat it in that separate kind of way, uh, leads to enormous confusion. Um, and I, I, know, I know this from uh, direct experience, having gone down the anatomical route and uh, sort of understood the body from the intellectual perspective, um, it was fascinating and um, it, it gave me an idea of where things are in the body and it's given me an overview um, but it wasn't it's not how the body works um, and because you know when, as long as i was doing that uh, i i wasn't finding any solutions for any of my issues i could explain them all i had ideas for why this muscle was too tight or there was a bit of pain in that joint or whatever i had ideas uh, but I had no solutions uh, because um, I, I, because I I was div I was separating myself from the experience that I was having, as in I was looking at it as a problem of the body. And um, my, uh, when solutions arose, um, occasionally it was sort of randomly during practice when when my particularly complicated medical map of the body was um, just so. In those moments, it was so simple. And the simplicity was that everything that was going on was simply a harmonious relationship to the world around me in, uh, in the way that I was engaging with it. So all, all that um, you know, decades of uh, study around how the body responds simplified into, well, I just need to be in good relationship to my earth, as in the quality of my engagement with the earth needs to reflect the outcome that I'm looking for, and a good relationship, and I'm talking about physical relationships, as in, you know, um, you, can, you can have an intellectual relationship with someone, but if you want to have a real relationship, there needs to be some sort of contact, some sort of engagement on anything other, on something other than an intellectual level, even if it's just emotional, you know. There needs to be some sort of direct relationship to the thing that you want to have a good relationship with. And the same goes for the space that I occupy, and, and it's real, and it's physiological, and it's to do with the breath and other things. And, um, yeah, so uh, envirosomatic, as in the way I feel about myself uh, through my body is a direct reflection of how I engage with the world around me, which is pretty obvious. But um, yes, uh, I think our physical practice is best served if we can centre our intentions and attention in those directions, and, and that's the centre of my teaching. So, um, yeah, that was a long-winded <laughs> intro to say hi, I'm Mark J. Aquaviva, uh, but there you go. Uh, I, I have some questions today, let me see. Um, I have to go onto a different page. Here we go. So, yes, um, some good questions from, where is it now? There's a question from Kevin. Um, Hi Mark, I would love any yoga to help with adrenal fatigue, certainly, and keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. 
and Alex, Alex Jones. Hi, Alex. Uh, thyroid support. Not shoulder stand, though. Too heavy to do it. Well, depends how you do it, but yes, okay, I understand. Um, let's see. I have a strange fluttering in the chest. I think it's thyroid imbalance as I have issues. Worth an ask. Yes. Okay. Um, well, they're both... Um, gland related as in um, yeah the soft stuff in the body that um, regulates how we feel about things and how, how our, our body chemistry works so uh, the, yeah the way I see um, the, the way I look for solutions for these things is well I suppose it's where my anatomical study does come in handy but it's just to know where things are in the body. Because um, if, if, as I do, if you, if you, want, to, if you want to see uh, the body accurately, rather than measuring it by what we're doing in ten terms of tension, you know, what effort do I have to engage with to do this posture, for example, it's just a complete red herring. Um, what, um, what we want to look at, see is the body as this sort of container, this, this structure with spaces between. And, and, when, and um, those spaces are defined by the tissue. So it's either the muscles or the organs or the um, endocrine system. You know, whatever's in there um, needs to be treated like a sacred space. So if, if you want a muscle to let go, then you, you look at the relationship that the bones are making and you, you see what that relationship is, cause, is causing for the muscles that you're uh, worrying about. Um, as opposed to doing anything to the muscle, because that's, a, that's a, um, a bit silly. If, you know, because if the muscle is supporting you, you don't want to disable it or stretch it or anything. Um, you might want other. You might want to find other ways of doing it so that the muscle doesn't have to do the work. So, anyway, that's a, that's another story. But when it comes to organs and uh, other important, vital parts of ourselves that we have to look after, a good way of understanding how to help is to see it as a space. So, for example, the um, adrenal fatigue. So, so guaranteed, Kevin. Um, when you are busy and getting on with life and uh, being active and you know feeling adrenal, guaranteed there is some tension around the top of the kidneys. Uh, it'll, it'll most likely be the way you hold yourself up, or it could be you hanging off that area. Either way, the soft stuff that is the adrenal glands that sits on top of the kidneys will be under duress of some kind. So the solution to adrenal fatigue is to put yourself in a situation where you feel supported and the adrenal glands are not under duress. And moreover, you want to redress the things so they need to be able to breathe and let go and have an appropriate space for them to act um, as they are meant to act. Um, and yeah, uh, uh, also, you know, it's, it's to do with um, uh, sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system. So, so you have to find a, a place of calm. So, um, and we'll, we'll do that on this class. Um, and Alex's question, thyroid support, not shoulder stand though. So it's interesting, um, you know, the postures that are given for particular things, um, it's not the posture that does it. Uh, it's it's if you find a comfortable seat, if you find appropriate support and space. But that you know that being said, shoulder stand when done appropriately, there will be um, a sort of a coming together of structures through the the weight being on the head and the weight being on the shoulders that gives you a relationship between the above the throat and the top of the chest, which is the thyroid space, that sort of contains that space and slackens it off. 
so that the thyroid gland can get a chance to uh, not be under duress, uh, to, to not, not be pulled apart or um, irritated. So in principle, an, a good shoulder stand, as in the weight is on the shoulders and the head can rest back from that, with the release of the breath, you'll get a massage for the area uh, together with um, a steadiness of attention to support um, from the, the points of contact that are creating that space. So in principle, shoulder stand should be able to help thyroid issues. But if you think about how most people do shoulder stand, they simply take their weight onto their necks and hold themselves up there with tension in the throat whilst they try and stretch their necks. And the result of that is more problems for the thyroid, as in you're pulling tight in the throat and you're pulling the spine apart at the back and all the tissue that goes over the skull and the cranial nerves and everything. It's going to cause uh, difficulty for the area. So shoulder stand itself doesn't do anything for thyroid issues, but it can, uh, the, the arrangement can possibly give the thyroid a chance to drop into homeostasis, a homeostatic sort of um, um, yeah, state where, where it's not under duress. So, um, but the, the, the key is the relationship that allows that to happen, and I've got an idea for that, so. And we can um, uh, work out how to let go of adrenal stress as well. So, let's see. Uh, lying down is going to be the thing. I hope that's okay for people. Um, I, I do a lot of lying down. I hope it's not boring. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, so, um, if because we're dealing with these two areas, the the um, adrenal area and the thyroid area, um, what's it's important that when you lie down, that it doesn't feel um, lifted around the adrenal area, and it doesn't feel constricted in the thyroid area. So um, if you're someone that, ha that uh, whose head lies back when you lie down, that'll give you space, but um, the, there'll be a disconnect between the skull and the, and the uh, rib cage. So <clears throat> the relationship that makes up that space won't be, won't be quite happy. So if that's the case, then you can support the head uh, away from the ground. But it's not, it's not to stretch the neck, which is what most people do. It's a kind of old-style osteopathic thing. Yeah, I've got some blocks here, I'll show you what I mean. So uh, most people, when they use a block for their head, because they think they're correcting a short neck, will then put the head on the block and use it to stretch the neck which it, which won't be useful um, any more than um, doing that is useful if lying down makes you feel stranded in this way then you can use a block but to bring to allow the head to rest back in a more forward position not to push the head forwards, to allow the head to rest vertically back in a more forwards position so that you can have uh, more of a connect between the rib cage and the head. I hope that makes sense. Um, if you are unduly heavy in the pelvis or if you have the habit of flattening out your back by tightening the groins and tilting the pelvis. Both are sort of doing stuff to that, that lower back area, middle back area. So the same can be true for a prop underneath the pelvis. 
again, most people, if they, if they use a problem underneath the pelvis, they feel the release of the lumbar spine and they think, okay, I need more of that. So they put it in a place where the spine sags off the block um, and with the idea of stretching the back. Now, if you want to put a, a block underneath the pelvis to help this area open up, it's simply so that the pelvis can rest back as much as it did here, which is what happens when you don't tuck under. Yeah? So that, that feeling of allowing the sort of pelvis closer to your upper back is, is, good, is good for you. Um, so you're not sort of holding tension in the groins. But if that feels uncomfortable for this area, then you can just simply have a block so that the pelvis can rest back in a higher position. And that verticality will give you a neutral sense for the spine. So you can relax back around the solar plexus and allow the kidneys to open and breathe. You can relax the head back into support allowing the chest to empty away from you so that the thyroid area can breathe so that the adrenal area, the kidney area can breathe and in this situation we, um, uh, the kidneys will breathe more easily because, because of gravity as in we're not holding ourselves up, we're, we're resting back towards the spine from the front of the body, which will invite the breath into the back of the body a bit more. And there are a couple of ribs that insert into the diaphragm that um, help the back of the diaphragm expand, widen as, the, as it descends, as you breathe. And that is essentially massaging the kidney area and the adrenal glands, soothing them. Now, if you want to help things along a little, um, the generic instruction is to make your contact about equal. So if you want to help with your own efforts, you can also breathe into the contact of the feet. And by engaging through the earth, you get a core response, which is one of the things I was talking about in my sort of enviro-somatic thing. If you actually engage with the earth, looking for support, then the core of the body responds. And that response invites the breath more into the back of the body. When you have adrenal lift going on, the breath will want to come here and if you're holding yourself down at the same time, the breath will be shallowly up here. <laughs> it's not wrong, it's just um, if you're not supported, the, the breath goes where there is space to breathe and that might be a very restricted area. So this um, relationship to earth, if you press through your feet slightly, just to make it about equal to the kind of pressure underneath the pelvis, and if you uh, clasp, clasp your hands, we're going, to do, we're going to work with both areas at the same time, you see. Clasp your hands, invert them so that the uh, knuckles at least, the thumb, the end of the thumb perhaps, can lean on the breastbone. Uh, if you're doing prayer pose, uh, the fingers can span the chest, but if there's any um, difficulty in your wrist, it's kind of better to just to uh, grasp your hands and turn and the hands inwards so that the thumbs can lean on the breastbone somewhere useful. So that, that will help you find a bit of um, space away from the ground in the spine behind the heart. Uh, the, the dropping of the shoulders back from the supported hands um, invites lightness in the upper thoracic spine. At the same time, the thumbs leaning on the chest, the weight going down through that, helps you tune into the lengthening of the breastbone, 
with the release of the breath. So from your shoulder girdle, from your hands, we've got the breastbone and spine coming together with the release of the breath. And if you relax, um, ha have your mouth closed, but relax the jaw apart slightly, so you can put the tongue on the back of the teeth for that. I can't, because I'm talking. <laughs> um, uh, what was I saying? Yes. Yeah, so uh, relax the jaw, but with the mouth closed, and then a sighing breath. Helps the breastbone empty away from the brain. To give you more space around the throat. Especially if the head is dropping back and a very slight embrace through the back of the head to match the feet. With the sighing release of the breath. Can help develop the space between the voice box and the top of the sternum, which is the thyroid area. You can just press the chest down, but that won't create a spacious relationship between head and chest. It's about releasing vertically back as the spine um, releases with the breath or is moved by the breath ver um, vertically forwards in this situation. And I'm talking about the upper thoracic between the bump at the base of the neck and the spine behind the heart. Now this, um, so for you Kevin, this will also help bring you into parasympathetic mode. The sighing breath is a calming breath for the mind. It's known as Ujjayi, uh, which uh, is translated as victorious breath, but uh, I prefer the um, description as satisfied breath. and the spine and breastbone coming together is uh, with the head dropping back, um, embracing the contact behind you will allow the spine and the thyroid to open up. It sort of makes a, a hollowness, a space um, between the voice box and the top of the chest that opens up, but dissolves inwards. And the adding of the feet with the release of the breath will help the ribs anchor down over the emptying solar, solar plexus space. So you get this nice sense of containment um, around your central space, below the heart. And in both cases of contact with the ground, uh, the feet, the head, the shoulders, but in both areas, the arrival of the breath, because of that emptying back feeling at the front, which is caused by your relationship to the ground. If that relationship to the ground stays with you as the breath arrives, it will arrive wide across the kidneys so the adrenals get a massage. And it will arrive wide underneath your wings and um, sort of between your head and neck at the side, so around your gills. And if you've got the contact with the head accurate, it, it can also um, go into the space between the skull and the neck at the back. Which keeps the sort of fluid connection between the brain and the uh, whole of the endocrine system. You know, trap, um, tension trapped in the base of the skull 
uh, which, hap uh, which happens with stress, uh, also happens with whiplash and migraine, um, kind of interferes in that connection and, and sets off parasympathetic, uh, sets off sympathetic nervous system um, responses. So breathing into the back of you, around the base of the skull, the base of the spine, pelvic floor, but the back of the kidneys, across the top of the wings at the back. That helps, uh, even though it takes effort, if you're sourcing it in the contact you make with the earth, the, the effort is causing core responses that invites the breath into the back of the body. Without that, you're just imagining it. Or even worse, making the area tense in order to feel the area whilst you breathe. What you need is the breath to touch that, those spaces behind you and the emptying breath to create more space within. More space between structures. So more space between structures. Good. I didn't actually need the blocks, so that was a bit harder work. And it needed to be for me, but um, I understand that um, blocks can be helpful for people that just wanted to make sure that they were used well. Uh, uh, I need to have a little roll around after that, so what shall I do? Just um, it might be useful to bring this sort of parasympathetic mode into action. Uh, that's the point of postures, I suppose. So if you uh, bring the knees up, have the ankles crossed, um, whichever way around you like. Uh, if you're turning your knees to the right, the left ankle on top is kind of useful. Um, and what we can do is we can look for the same situation as, as the pelvis turns to the right and the head turns to the left. He head is turning from the ribs. Pelvis is turning from the ribs. It's your ribs that turn you, you see. And then um, the engagement with the earth through through points of contact, shoulders, head, and opposite pelvis can allow these spaces to open with the release of the breath, to elongate. And the spaces behind you to breathe with the arrival of the breath if you relate these things to your contact and the space you occupy. So from the ground you, you allow the breath to widen from the contact, widen to space. Release the release of the breath emptying back. And perhaps have a momentary rest on each side. I haven't got long, so I'll just do the other side. That'll do for me. Good. So I hope that was helpful. Um, Alex and Kevin. Anyone else that's watching? Yeah, uh, yeah. I hope that was helpful. Um, I, I enjoyed it very much. I don't know about you, but I, I find I find these um, deeper explorations actually more physically in, engaging than um, just doing postures. Uh, I mean, um, I, I I also enjoy doing postures. I, I I like the challenge of finding those kind of relationships during postures, but to, um, you know, in the, in the approach to postures, because it, it turns out it's the, it's the answer anyway, it's the same stuff, it's always the same stuff. These relationships, you know, if you've, if you've got a thyroid problem, you want that relationship to be with you um, at all times. If you've got, if you've got adrenal, ten, a tendency to be adrenal, adrenally burnt out, you need to breathe into your kidneys at all times. So these relationships that you develop um, in these kind of apparently simple postures, um, the, the work that you do there is the important stuff and um, 
uh, when you can find that same work that creates the same relationships in other situations, then you have a, an actual solution for life. So, um, yeah, anyway. Um, so I hope that was helpful. I hope that was interesting. And uh, you, can, you can apply the principle to anything you like. Um, uh, what have I got going on now? Uh, I've got my class in uh, half an hour. Uh, I don't know if there's space to join, but um, if you do so pretty rapidly, you might be able to get a place. Um, there's another one this evening at 6.30, the, the evening classes, there's usually a bit of space if you want to join. Um, another one tomorrow at 11am, they're all 75 minute kind of guided um, practices based on the needs of the participants. Then uh, this weekend, uh, I haven't got a Saturday retreat I'm afraid, because I'm doing a, uh, a workshop for Yoga Scotland on Sunday, it's an ongoing training day, 7.5 points for the day. Um, you can get a, you can get a, a place, uh, a live and interactive place for, I think it's £35 for, for Yoga Scotland members or 40 if you're if you're not. Uh, and you can get a view only place for cheaper. And um, I think there's a couple of places left on that if you um, want to join that. You, have, you book it via Yoga Scotland, but the link's on my website. That's this weekend. Uh, following Saturday, I will be doing another Saturday morning re retreat. Um, when I put it up, I would book as soon as possible because it gets fully booked quite rapidly. And it's free for gold members, so that's part of the reason. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, soon after, um, I, I think uh, July, August, I'm going to be launching a six day daily morning workshop, two and a half hours every morning from 10.30 to 1, uh, with a break in the middle for a cup of tea or something, uh, for six days. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be my equivalent of the Aqua Viva uh, intensive retreat and uh, over that six days I'm going to work through all the significant relationships between structures, between parts of the body. Um, I'm going to cover the, the whole shebang over the, <laughs> over the six days. Uh, I think I, I might make it open to daily, uh, daily attendance but I'll, I'll see what I get in terms of um, uh, uh, full full p participants first because um, it's a process. It's uh, and you might want to dip in for your shoulders, but you'll be missing the the rest of the body, and um, and it, and actually your shoulders. Um, uh, if if your shoulders are the problem, the 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 issue is going to be how the rest of the body relates to the shoulders. So so you'll be so. But it, you know you might want to drop in for a day if there's space. Um, so yeah. The, I, I, I'm going to take a, a maximum of 11 people for that. I, I do 15 for my Saturday morning retreats because it's kind of a gentle flow. I don't have to be too precise. But, um, but um, yes, this is going to be an intensive for dedicated practitioners that really want to get down to the nuts and bolts of things and have a brand new experience of themselves. Um, yeah, I think prob probably early August possibly late July. Well, I'll, I'll work it out and um, when I've got it sorted I'll let you know. And um, it'll be um, like a launching of my next online CPD course which um, is going to be called Structural Intelligence as a follow-on from Haptic Intelligence, Proprioceptive Intelligence and the Core Intelligence series. Um, we're, we're going into the relationships uh, between uh, significant structures of the body. And like I said, I'm going to do the whole thing over, over six days during the retreat and then I will, it's not really a repeat, it will be more zooming in on particular aspects per session um, and, it, and the course will run on Sunday mornings, two and a half hour workshops. Uh, it'll be, it won't be every Sunday, um, but um, two or three per month uh, over six sessions and that will be available as well. Uh, that you have to buy the, you have to join the course itself so to, to follow. Um, so is that about it?
uh, I think so, that'll do for now. Um, I had a nice session, so thank you for the questions, Kevin and Alex, and uh, feel free to ask anything you like. I, uh, I like responding to questions, it gives me, gives me something fresh to work with rather than working on my own stuff. And um, yes, I, I always benefit from it, so thank you so much. So that's me, I think, um, until same time, same place uh, next week. I'm Mark J. Aquaviva of the Enviro-Somatic Approach to Bodywork. Um, signing off. Much love to you all. Bye now.